Hey guys, welcome to LumoVest. In this video, we're going to learn about the balance sheet. The balance sheet is one of the three main financial statements, along with income statement and cash flow statement that we use to analyze a company. Here's what it looks like. The balance sheet has three main sections, assets, what the company owns, liabilities, what the company owes, and equity, what's left over for the owners of the company after liabilities are repaid. You can think of the balance sheet as a financial report that tells you the company's net worth at a specific point in time, whereas the income statement and the cash flow statement shows how the company has performed financially over a period of time. The balance sheet shows the financials at a specific point in time. For example, whereas the income statement and the cash flow statement might show you how much money the business earned from January 1st to December 31st, the balance sheet will tell you how much assets the company has and how much liabilities it owes at the end of the day on December 31st. For this reason, some people refer to the balance sheet as a snapshot of the company's financial position. That's why the balance sheet is also known as the statement of financial position. Conceptually, of the total value of assets the company controls, whatever is left after paying for the value of liabilities it owes belongs to the owners. Therefore, Assets equals liabilities plus equity. This is known as the accounting equation. The total value of assets must be the same as the total value of liabilities and equity. We say that the balance sheet balances when the two numbers equal one another. Conceptually, an asset is anything that the company controls that has value, anything that benefits the company. Within the assets section, companies will further subcategorize their various assets by current assets and long-term assets. Current assets are those that can be converted into cash within one year, whereas long-term assets are those that cannot be converted into cash within one year. The ability to convert assets into cash is known as liquidity. The items in the assets section are ordered based on decreasing liquidity. In other words, the assets that can be most easily converted into cash are listed first, while those that are most difficult to convert into cash are listed last. Naturally, Items in the current assets section are ordered before long-term assets. Conceptually, a liability is anything that has value that the company owes to other parties. Similar to the assets section, companies will also further subcategorize what they owe by current liabilities and long-term liabilities. Current liabilities are those that require cash payments within one year, whereas long-term liabilities are those that do not require cash payments within one year. Current liabilities are ordered before long-term liabilities. The equity section then shows shareholders' equity, which is the difference between total assets and total liabilities. While companies have minor differences in formatting and labeling, this overall structure is standard across companies. The assets section comes first, followed by liabilities, and equity comes last. Now that we understand how the balance sheet is structured, let's go down the list and learn about the major line items that appear on the balance sheet. The first line on the balance sheet is usually cash and cash equivalents. This is the value of the cash the company has on hand, the cash it has in the cash registers, the cash in the bank accounts, CDs, etc. Recall that the line items in the assets section are ordered based on liquidity, and nothing is more liquid than cash, which is why cash and cash equivalents is usually the first line on the balance sheet. Next is short-term investments. This is the value of investments the company has that can be easily sold and converted into cash within a year. They're usually publicly traded securities, such as stocks and bonds, that can be easily liquidated. Accounts receivables is the value of money that customers owe the company, but not yet paid. The company has already provided goods and services to the customers, but customers haven't paid yet. Inventory is the value of the company's products waiting to be sold. This is the value of the company's products that it has in the warehouse or in stores. Prepaid expenses is the value of the cash payment made in advance for expenses before they are incurred. Said differently, prepaid expenses represents the value of the products and services that have been paid for but not received or used yet by the company. These are the most common current assets. Now let's talk about the long-term assets. Long-term investments are investments the company has made that cannot be sold and converted into cash within one year. They're usually investments in privately held companies. Unlike publicly traded stocks and bonds that can be sold at the click of a button, these investments can't be liquidated without an extended sale process. Property, plant, and equipment, or PP&D, relates to physical assets the company controls other than its inventory. 
PPD includes things like land, factory buildings, machines, computers, desk, chairs, refrigerators, keyboards, telephones, shopping carts, trucks, etc. Intangible assets are assets that the company controls without a physical substance, such as brand, copyrights, patents, licenses, customer relationships, and trade secrets. Together, PPD and intangible assets form the backbone of every company and empower them to run their business and earn profits. And finally, there's goodwill, which represents the value of unidentifiable and tangible assets. Add up all these values, and we have the total value of assets. By the way, if you want to learn more about finance, accounting, and investing, you should check out the online courses on our website. Link is in the description. Now let's talk about the common items under liabilities. First on this list is usually current portion of long-term debt. This is the amount of money the company owes to lenders that has to be repaid within the year. The company may have borrowed a lot more in total, but only has to repay a portion of it within one year. Therefore, it's called current portion of long-term debt. Deferred revenue is the value of goods and services that the company owes to its customers. The customers have already paid the company in advance, but the company has not yet delivered what the customers had purchased. Accounts payable represents the value of money the company owes to suppliers and other vendors that have provided goods and services to the company. Said differently, the company had purchased things from other companies but not yet paid for them. Accrued expenses represents the value of money the company owes that have accrued over time. Essentially, the company has incurred the expense but hasn't paid for it yet. It's things like wages and rent that accrue over time. Income tax payable is the value of money the company owes the government in taxes. The company owes this amount in outstanding taxes to the government. Capital lease represents the value of future lease payments that the company has to make to owners of whatever asset the company is leasing, like office space, factory buildings, etc. The current portion is the amount due within one year, and the long-term portion is due beyond the one year. These line items represent quantifiable liabilities, but there's also non-quantifiable liabilities at the time of reporting, known as commitments and contingencies. Commitments are obligations of the company to perform something in the future. For example, if a company signed a contract to buy $100 million of goods from a supplier in five years from now, that's a commitment investors need to know about. Contingencies are possible obligations that can take place based on uncertain future events. An example would be a company being sued for $20 million and the lawsuit is still pending. Companies usually lay out the details for commitments and contingencies in the footnotes to financial statements. And finally, we have equity. This is the value of all the assets left over to the owners after covering all the liabilities. The most important line in this section is shareholders' equity. And that's it. That's the balance sheet. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. And remember to subscribe.